It's the Tuesday edition of the Morning Pit here on YouTube.com slash PantherLair.com and Chris Peak from PantherLair.com, Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com is right there below. You see the website, you can type that into your search bar up ahead, Don't or up above. Don't click that. That's not a link. That's just an image. Type it into the search bar up above so you can uh, check out the most comprehensive source of Pitt Sports News on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. And of course, our YouTube channel here, youtube.com slash panther-lair.com. It's where we release a new morning pit video every day of the week, Monday through Friday. We put out practice highlights and post-practice interview sessions. We do our live show here on uh, youtube.com slash panther-lair.com. We do that tonight, or not tonight, tomorrow night. <laughs> I forgot what day it is. Tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. right here on youtube.com slash panther-lair.com, our weekly Panther Lair show talking about everything going on <clears throat> Excuse me, in the world of pit sports, just like we do here on the Morning Pit each day. And, and I always say that we talk about everything going on in the world of pit sports, but obviously a lot of our focus tends to revolve around football and, and men's basketball. And I, I think that's understandable, you know, why we focus a lot on that. That's what that's where most of the interest is. But there were a couple of things that came out yesterday that I think are worth discussing and, and I think are are interesting and, and notable. And they're not necessarily they're they're not directly related to football or men's basketball. They they're they're connected to football and men's basketball, but it's not a direct uh, a direct relation where we're going to talk about the latest developments from spring camp or who Pitt's going to land out of the transfer portal on the basketball team. But there were a couple developments, and um, we'll start with the biggest one first. Uh, Pitt has announced its new chancellor, Patrick Gallagher, stepping down after nine years this summer, and his replacement is Joan Gable from the University of Minnesota. Uh, Pitt announced yesterday that they are hiring her to take over as chancellor. I tried to decide what verb to use there. Do you know? Do, do they name the new chancellor? Do they appoint the new chancellor? I mean, they hire the new chancellor. I don't think they would put that kind of language in their press release, but that's what they did. They hired a new chancellor, and she comes from the University of Minnesota, where she was the president and chief executive for a couple of years. Not a long time uh, in that top position in Minnesota, but certainly a couple of years and involvement with the, a few interesting projects that I think are relevant to Pitt. First of all, in the big picture, I, you know, you've got someone coming from a land grant institution, which is not the case with Pitt, but she's also coming from um, a pretty prestigious research university, which does have carryover to Pitt and is relevant to Pitt, and also a university that exists in something of an urban area, which I think is also relevant to Pitt because that's what you've got with the University of Pittsburgh. We'll come back to the urban point in just a second. Obviously, our interest here, beyond research and all of those things, our interest here is sports and how you know the new chancellor approaches athletic programs and the support that the new chancellor will, new chancellor will provide for the athletic programs. Because Patrick Gallagher was, uh, I mean, about as supportive as you're going to get in, in terms of, you know, athletic minded, athletics minded chancellors, all the things that we talk about, all, all the things that we talk about as far as what, what Scott Barnes was able to do, or Heather Lake was able to do, or has been able to do. It all starts with an okay from above. Um, Heather Lake has done a good job at retaining coaches. She has helped, you know, the, the various programs. She's certainly helped football retain assistant coaches. Um, and, and she's drawn, high profile new hires some have worked some have not but she's drawn relatively high profile new hires jeff capel being the most obvious example in addition to you know a whole lot of facilities improvements and she's signed off on a lot of these things and said okay on a lot of these requests from the coaches but to do all that she needs to get the okay from above the, the resources have to be there the support has to be there from the chancellor or else none of these things happen and and i think certainly um those who have been around uh, and watched Pitt Athletics for a long time would, would would concur that that support has not always been there from, from the cathedral, from lower campus, as they like to say. It hasn't always been consistent. It hasn't always been uh, enough to sustain success. Patrick Gallagher provided that support. Uh, and, and while you know we certainly give a whole lot of credit to Heather Like, uh, you know, Athletic Director of the Year, for what she's been able to accomplish and what she has done, uh, in her time at Pitt over the last five years, six years, or however long it's been, uh, 
it takes more than just the athletic director. It takes the support of the university as a whole to say, okay, we are going to throw money behind this. And I think forward thinking, not even forward thinking, but just I think some chancellors, some university leadership can see the big picture of how sports affects uh, the university as a whole. Uh, in, in Pitt's press releases, they've mentioned a number of times that they sent a new record for undergraduate applications uh, this year. I don't think that's completely unconnected to the ACC championship two years ago. I'm not going to say it's entirely because of that. I'm not going to say Pitt won the ACC championship and had a Boletnikoff award winner and a Heisman Trophy finalist, and they, that immediately translated into a new record for undergraduate applications. But I'm not going to say it doesn't matter. I'm not going to say it's not connected. Because even if guys, I mean, maybe, maybe you know, you don't have thousands of kids across the country and across the world saying, hey, I want to go to Pitt because they had a Heisman Trophy finalist. But what it does is something I talked about yesterday as far as creating, I'm not, I don't want to use the word brand. I always, ah. it, it creates recognition. It creates prominence. It, it puts the word Pitt. It puts the name Pitt out there as a school of interest. You know, I would not be surprised to see if applications, undergraduate applications dipped in the 1990s as Pitt's prominence as a football program also dipped. I would not be surprised to see an overlap and a connection with that. I would not be surprised to see if that little blip of success that Pitt had uh, at the end of the 2000s in Dave Wanstead's final year or two, um, maybe even dating back to the 13 to 9 game, I would not be surprised to see if there was a, a uh, an increase in applications. There is, I, I think, a, a, a connection and an effect that athletic success can have on your undergraduate applications and in general interest in the university. I mean, who's going to Alabama, right? I, I mean, yes, the, Alabama probably has programs that really interest, uh, you know, a, a certain segment of students. I mean, it's probably a very good school for certain programs, and, and that's where they draw the majority of their applications. But Alabama is a, a national, nationally known school and a whole lot of its recognition comes from its athletic success. I mean, I think that's 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 a reality. I mean, Notre Dame without football is Marquette or Georgetown. Very good school, prominent school, but not known, not as big of a deal as it is without its football program. And, and again, I don't want to take anything away. I don't want to overstate the importance of athletics, but there's a whole lot going on here. It's the cliche of you know, athletics is the front porch of the university. Well, yeah, if you want to raise your, I mean, you could put up billboards saying, you know, we're one of the top 10 research universities in the country and that's good. And that would draw some interest. You can also put up a billboard showing Aaron Donald, you know, or you can put up a billboard showing the ACC championship, or you can put up a billboard, you know, after the 13 to nine game highlighting that. And guess what? You're going to draw some interest there too. And so, the new chancellor, Joan Gable, coming from University of Minnesota, another school with Division One football, uh, Division One athletic programs, in a Power Five conference, understanding the, uh, you know, uh, ideally, hopefully, understanding the landscape of college athletics as it exists in 2023, should have you would like to think would come in with an appreciation of what what is needed in terms of supporting athletics i think there there are interesting parallels and, and connections uh, i was reading sort of her her bio that she oversaw a you know billion dollar capital campaign uh, or, or was you know heavily involved in that and i think that's important i think pitt needs to always raise money and i'm talking about it on the university level um everything you see all that construction in oakland it's almost all pitt doing things i'm sure upmc is involved as well it's almost all Pitt doing things, and they need to keep raising money for that. And then you trickle that down to athletics, and they need to keep raising money to pay for the Victory Heights project. Um, that, you know, whatever the, the, the nine figures that, that gets thrown around for how much that project costs, that's not all coming from donations from Pitt fans. You know, that's university funding. And they're going to need to raise that money. They're going to need to find a way to generate that money, and that's... Uh, um, you know, that's going to be a big task for the new chancellor to continue to, to generate funds and capital campaigns. I, I think you know, Pitt as a university is in a really good spot and a healthy spot. And I think they keep moving forward and they were moving forward prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. I think they survived that, that span, that, 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 era of time that that challenging difficult era of time and and they continue to move forward and and you see the construction i'll tell you the other thing that's going to be interesting to watch um and, and i think maybe this is where 
you would like to think her experience of being in the Twin Cities and being in an urban area will be relevant is she's walking into a situation where the mayor of Pittsburgh has uh, decided to go after some tax-exempt en- entities, uh, primarily UPMC. I mean, there's a lot that he's going after that Ed Ganey is is attempting to tax, um, you know, a, a number of properties, a number of UPMC properties. But there's one pit property uh, I was just reading that is on his list uh, that he wants to remove the tax exempt status from. And it's curious. It's the uh, so it's curious because it's the OC lot, and I thought. That's weird. That's a random property to tax the OC lot, not not like the Peterson Event Center or uh, you know, or, or the Cathedral or you know Shenley Plaza, whatever. No, the, the OC lot. Hmm. That's a weird uh, parcel to uh, target to for removing tax exempt status, right? Unless and you're the city and you know there's some major project coming to that particular stretch of land. Hmm. What could that be? I'm kidding. I, I have no idea if any of that even works that way. I don't know if there would be any possible reason for the city to want to remove tax exempt status from a stretch of from from a piece of land before it's uh, you know majorly developed into a, a you know an enormous project. I don't know anything about that, but it sure is fun to spread conspiracy theories that way, isn't it? My point, though, the new chancellor is going to have to be able to navigate the political landscape locally. She's going to need to have people locally that she can rely on, that can help her in this situation. Um, I, I have, I, I'm not taking a side one way or the other, Pitt or the city. That that's, I don't even live in the city, so I mean that's that's out of my domain altogether. But you know, presumably Pitt is going to want to, uh, you know, I, I mean Pitt's going to have to navigate this landscape, and the new chancellor is going to need. Uh, you know, whatever experience she can draw on from, you know, Minneapolis and St. Paul. And then also she's going to need a pretty strong support system around her uh, as, as she works with this. If the city starts to be more aggressive toward Pitt's tax exempt status and tax exempt properties. But again, that that's that's over my head. I'm certainly not a lawyer and it's far beyond anything I have, uh, you know, expertise in, but it is something that's going to be going to be relevant. Primarily, of course, we'll all be watching to see what her interest is and uh, level of support is for athletics. And then there was news on the athletic side as well. Heather Like announced or Pitt announced that uh, they, they really go to great lengths to not say we fired someone. They announced a head coaching change for gymnastics. Um, they fired someone. They fired Samantha Snyder, uh, who was hired a few years ago to be the gymnastics coach. Really didn't have a lot of success. Really didn't do well um, in in her time at Pitt. Didn't have the kind of ex- success that you uh, you know that I think she was hired uh, with the expect expectation of reaching. And Heather like fired her. And and that's notable. Not necessarily that we you know we don't talk a lot of gymnastics here on the. Uh, the morning pit or on pantherlair.com, but it's notable because it's the second coach now that Heather like has hired and fired the first time. The first coach that she fired, who she also hired was Lance white, the women's basketball coach. She fired him last month after another bad season for that program. And that one was notable to me because it was the first time Heather like fired one of her own hires. You know, she, she had no, uh, she, had no hesitation about firing inherited coaches. She fired a number of them and made a number of changes when she first arrived at Pitt six years ago. Uh, but she hadn't yet fired someone she hired. Uh, Lance White was the first. Now Samantha Snyder is the second. So I, I think I counted up nine total coaches that Heather Like has hired. Um, and she's fired now two of them. So, you know, she'll, she'll obviously hire the replacements for those two jobs. But of the nine, the first nine coaches that Heather Like hired, two of them have now gotten the axe by Heather Like. Uh, other hires that Heather Like has made, um, Randy Waldrum, the win- women's soccer coach. Obviously, the Jeff Capel, the men's basketball coach. Mike Bell and Jody Hermanic, baseball and softball, respectively, were both hired by Heather Like. Uh, Chase Kreitler, the swimming and diving coach was hired by Heather Like I think just last year, I think it was. And then uh, Emily Bossano, the women's lacrosse coach, was hired by Heather Like after Heather Like started the program. So she didn't fire anyone to hire uh, Emily Bossano. She just started a brand new program. She, I guess she fired tennis. So Heather Like fired tennis as a sport from the University of Pittsburgh and started a women's lacrosse program, uh, which, curiously, just a sort of a callback, was 
originally supposed to play in a stadium that was going to be built on the OC lot. Now that they've pretty much made a permanent home at Highmark Stadium, um, down along the river, the Riverhound Stadium. But uh, curious how that, that that plan sort of drifted away. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to keep pushing the OC lot rumors because why not? I mean, we, we, let's let's have fun with it. But it's interesting when you look at that list. You know, the nine coaches that Heather like is hired. Obviously, Randy Waldrum, I think, from women's soccer is, has been successful. Oh, Keith Gavin, also from wrestling, was was another. I forget if I mentioned him. She hired uh, Keith Gavin shortly after she was hired. I think that was, I believe that was her first hire. Um, he's He's been successful, a national champion this year in uh, Nino Bonacorsi. Um, you know, like I said, Randy Waldrum, women's soccer has been successful. Jeff Capel finally had that successful season this year. That hire looks like a good one now after a few years of, I think, a lot of questions about whether it was or not. Um, uh, Lance White and Samantha Snyder have gotten the axe. Chase Kreitler, not really sure what to, to make of that. I think he's, like I said, he's only been here about a year with the swimming and diving program. And Emily Bossano, you're in the second year of a program. Yeah, it's hard to... It's hard to judge. They're they're struggling this year with a really young team on the women's lacrosse side. Uh, but second year of a program, you know, I think it takes a few years, particularly playing a sport that the ACC is really really good at, and you're starting it basically from the ground up. That's a that's a real challenge. They had some success last year uh, in the context of a team that was playing for the first time. Um, you know, th- this year has been a struggle, but again, that's tough when you're building from the ground up, and then. The baseball and softball coaches, Bell and Hermanic, not great results uh, so far. You, you you start to wonder if if maybe they're next on the list. Uh, you know, you'll see. You know, we'll see how Heather like approaches that at the end of those seasons. But it's just interesting because all you know the success that Pitt has had. You know, particularly you know some some of their highest reaches of success. You know, Jay Vitovich. Men's soccer coach uh, was hired by Scott Barnes. Uh, Dan Fisher, volleyball coach, arguably the most, maybe not arguably, the most successful coach at Pitt right now, was hired by Steve Peterson. Uh, obviously, Pat Narduzzi was ha- hired by Randy Jewell, uh, the interim uh, athletic director after Scott Barnes left. Uh, you know, Heather like certainly gets credit for retaining these coaches, keeping them on board. She didn't lose. I'm, I'm sure Jay Vitovich had options. I'm sure Dan Fisher had options. I'm sure Pat Narduzzi has had options. She's kept those guys in place. She's kept them happy. She's kept their staffs together as much as, you know, reasonably possible and tried to do what she could for facility upgrades. Uh, but they ultimately weren't her hires. That's what made Jeff Capel such an important hire for Heather Like and why, you know, an extra reason he was under such scrutiny is because he was her marquee hire, and he needed to succeed. You know, he ultimately did um, this year, and he'll need to build on that going forward. But Heather Lake's going to need her hires to keep building success. You know, Randy Waldrum has to build on last season. Keith Gavin has to keep rolling like he has. Jeff Capel needs to, to build on last season. And then, you know, the new hires that she makes for women's basketball in particular need, I mean, you need to have it. You don't need to have a successful program there, but it would certainly help round out your athletic department. Uh, the more success you can get, the better. Uh, and gymnastics as well, sort of in that that same vein. So that's the latest hire. I, I can't, you know, I'm, I wouldn't imagine there will be any other firings. Uh, you know, maybe you get to the end of the baseball softball seasons and and reevaluate those sports and see if they're moving in the direction you want them to move. Um, but two two firings now of Heather like hires. So. Wondered uh, when the axe would start falling in that regard. It did with Lance White. Now it has with Samantha Snyder. So figured those were a couple topics that we should discuss just to, uh, even though they're not on the spring football basketball transfer front, still relevant to get to and uh, talk about. So new athletic director, or <laughs> new athletic director, new chancellor, excuse me, new chancellor in Joan Gable and uh, Heather Like making changes to the gymnastics program. So we'll see how each of those pans out i'm guessing when we talk to uh or if joan gable eventually does a press conference as the new chancellor at pitt uh, she'll be asked about sports uh because it's pretty important we'll see what she has to say maybe we'll even ask her if she uh, intends to build a football stadium can't can't fault a guy for asking right all right uh that's about it for today make sure you like this video and subscribe to our youtube channel youtube.com slash pantalaircom to keep up on all the video content we post there youtube.com slash pantalaircom turn on your notifications so you get an alert sent to your phone every time we post something new and 
yeah, I think that's about it. Hope you had a good Monday yesterday. Hope Tuesday goes well for you. And we will be back tomorrow morning for more Pitt Sports Talk right here on YouTube.com slash